We have new options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so again, good afternoon, everybody. Is our quiz. Uh, show the proof of the Minimax theorem like in the video lecture. Can start for okay, so I resumed the recording. And before before we continue, uh, I would like to say a couple of words uh, regarding the uh, last homework uh, number four. Yes, it's uh, it's very it's very good homework because it uh, consolidates uh, many parts of your knowledge, but also it uh, requires significant uh, work. I would say uh, I would estimate it's about one half or maybe almost two times more heavy than usual homework. Uh, that's why I really uh, strongly encourage you to start it right now if you didn't do it yet. Uh, to start, start it Im immediately, very intensively. Otherwise, we will have troubles uh, towards the end of semester. Because we still need uh, several days or maybe one week for checking it, so it should it should be submitted uh, on time. And uh, if you have uh, any questions or comments uh, regarding this homework, maybe it's good time to to say it. Did the. Uh, 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 first of all, please uh, put your hands down uh, who already uh, submitted and uh, did uh, everything. Uh, uh, Rafael, uh, Sharon. Uh, and now I, I, I would ask you if you already started uh, doing this work, uh, could you please uh, raise your hand? Uh, in var kolekavod uh, and neta and uh, in var and in val uh, and uh, does it go normally smoothly or you have any comments any problems? Encounter some problems with the code, but I believe we will solve them soon. <laughs> yes, I I I I I, I only want to pay attention let me put my screen okay. Michael, uh, if we're talking about the homework i have a question about uh, about the graphs if it's okay uh, just a second i should pin my video somehow okay uh before you ask your question, uh, just wait a second. I want to stress a very important thing. Uh, with uh, augmented Lagrangian, hmm, I, I even, you know, I, I would put it even on the on the screen. Let me one second. Let me find some slides uh, uh, and some slides of uh, augmented Lagrangian. No. Wait, was uh, uh, for example here, yes, the algorithm. 
So we, we have a problem with constraints. Uh, you program it uh, with general constraints and then uh, substitute uh, particular uh, linear constraints, like in this quadratic objective function and linear constraints. <coughs> but you should uh, implement a general solver, which uh, supplies somehow gradients and even second derivatives of general constraints if if needed and then uh, we build a penalty multiplier aggregator what we call augmented lagrangian and you minimize it at every iteration with the newton method and here you should pay attention to a very important thing i even put it as as a picture here uh, annotate uh, if uh, if I will uh, draw if I will draw let me take my better pen a uh, number of Newton steps And here, uh, for example, uh, gradient, norm of gradient of uh, F uh, P mu of X. Uh, what picture would we, and we do it on semi log uh, Y scale. Here, uh, here you have. Uh, for example, uh, uh, say 10, uh, I don't know, to the 2, 10 to the 1, and uh, so on. And here you have 10 to the minus 6, uh, and, so, and so on. What we expect from Newton to have such kind of be be behavior, it has uh, quadratic convergence. And in every inner iteration here, you should come to really low gradient, uh, say 10 to minus 5, minus 6, or even better. And then when we update our multipliers uh, and probably penalty parameter, we destroy this op optimality. So we have jump with gradient. And then again, jump with gradient and then again and what i want to say you uh, that this behavior is very important for debugging to know that your uh, hessian uh, calculations and the implementation of newton is uh, everything working nice because if it doesn't you you will not get this uh, very nice uh, quadratic convergence uh, usually it takes a relatively small number, say in five steps or in ten steps, uh, you you can easily get to very high accuracy. Okay, okay. Uh, now I'm with you. Any any question? Next question. Yes. Yes. Um, first of all, what is the first mu and p that uh, you suggest to you? I hope in the homework you have recommendations or not. I don't remember. Okay, and and uh, uh, no, you, you 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 should uh, look on and uh, we don't even have ask. Any. Huh? We don't have any initialization. Uh, okay, then uh, I would say you can take uh, equal one. <laughs> P and mu okay. equal one. It's okay. Okay. And okay, I didn't start the, the drill, but uh, uh, okay. But uh, it's up to you. if you will start with the other number. It's it's not critical. Usually, it repairs itself very very fast. Uh, according to the internet, the number should be positive. On both the 
P and uh, lambdas. If you, I'm not mistaken, the initialization number should be positive. Of course, of course. P, yeah. P, P is a penalty parameter, which is uh, just uh, let me move somehow. Uh, P is a penalty parameter. Yes, it's in our lecture. Yes, it's a non negative number. And mu, mu are play a role of Lagrange multipliers for the problem with inequality constraints. And we know that Lagrange multipliers are non negative. What is another question? Yes. Yeah, another question. Uh, can we use Newton method uh, um, from library, or do we need to use our old uh, implementation? Uh, it's good to use your own. It's a, it's a very good way to clean your Newton method to be sure uh, that it uh, shows this uh, right behavior of quadratic convergence. Of course, for debugging, for debugging, you can in parallel use something from library. It may help you to understand okay. where you are and which problems do you have. And C, C tag, we actually calculate it analytically, right? And uh, yes. it's a log, uh, it's, it's a combination of a log and a poly polynomial, right? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, it's a good question. Thank you very much. Uh, let me what should I do with this comments I, I will save and I will uh, clean clear my drawings and remove this and then we will move uh, just a second where do we have this nice here yes you you yes. you Yes, we're yes, talking yes. about this picture and and I yes. should uh, uh, pay your attention uh, pay your attention please on one more important thing in implementation it's not good idea to substitute a complicated formula for derivative of phi just a second where do we have aggregate to substitute a complicated formula for derivative of this particular phi to everywhere in your method. Much better, much better you, wow, again. Much better you implement MATLAB function, which gives, uh, which gets a scalar ar ar argument, which is X here. And in your case, finally, it will be the value of uh, constraint particular constraint and the returns value of phi and value of phi prime and in these terms you should be built all external part of the pro, uh, of the problem of the um, program not entering this particular properties of, of the phi in uh, external uh, in uh, wow in uh, external description yes for you fee should be like a black box okay so you mean we need to, to to create a function that is uh, calculating gradient thing as a black box you 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 will prepare a function which will compute gradients yes but yes. you will uh, you will have one more inner function internal function which uh, just computes scalar penalty function. It gets scalar argument and returns uh, value of phi and its first and second derivative. And please uh, check numerically separately this uh, particular function. I, I encourage you one more thing. Everything you do analytically and uh, implement in the code check also numerically you have this final di differentiation you don't need to build any plots uh, like you were required which epsilon uh, to choose which increment of x uh, you just can take uh, i don't know 10 to the minus 5 for example 
or minus six, it's uh, rather optimal. And check numerically whether your derivatives are right, whether your gradient is right, whether your Hessian is right. Because in uh, my experience, it's uh, probability uh, almost about 99% of having human mistake in the compu uh, computing such things. Okay. Any other question or comment? Um, what, what is, is the, the sorry. Yeah. what is the maximal constraint violation definition? And we're asked to plot this value. So, uh, for example, you are staying in a point. You are staying in a point, which is uh, not feasible. Yes. Then. Uh, some of constraints are positive, yes? Some of GIs are positive. And maximal of them is maximal constraint violation. It's the value of phi or the, some it's, distance uh, from? No, 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 it's the value of G, GI. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, and uh, I, I strongly encourage you, everything which we are talking now, if there is a volunteer to put comments in discussion group in I, I don't know whether I am not sure whether WhatsApp is the right place, but feel free also with this and also on Moodle. Those all those details are very important and you can even uh, refer people on our discussion on this and this uh, moment and video recording of our zoom class. I hope it will be recorded normally. Okay. More more questions? What is the stopped condition? Uh, stopping condition. I, I I would say you 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 have two. You you have internal uh, optimization, and I would put for Newton rather hard, even ten to the minus six or seven norm of uh, gradient of uh, aggregate. And uh, external, it's also not defined. Uh, you could say that the maximal uh, uh, act, act, actually you, you, you know our, our our task is not uh, fully universal, it's experimental, because in the beginning you are computing uh, analytically, also X, also optimal function value. And I, I, I would say to put when your distance to optimal X and uh, uh, difference with optimal function value is something like 10 to the minus six. And also you, you have a, optimal Lagrange multipliers, yes? You have three criteria and put uh, all of them 10 to the minus six and also maximal constraint violation, one more criteria. I, I, it's, it's only for learning purposes. Uh, quite often it's uh, a bit challenging, especially for ge general non-convex sol uh, sol solvers. It's a bit heuristic. Uh, one can say about duality gap and so on, uh, the gap between dual and function and primal function value, but we, we are not entering the details. So what I told it's uh, should be enough. Okay, thank you. Oh, pleasure. Okay. Good and uh, really, really start working very actively now because it requires it uh, very easily in this uh, in this method uh, to enter some corner when some part is not working and you don't know why. So it, it may be very stressful if you will leave it to the end. Okay, let me put back my my screen and go back 
to our lecture today, to our today lecture. Uh, where it is? Okay. Minimax, game, game theory, and Lagrange duality. Okay. Minimax theorem you already proved. And uh, how do I remember where to put sign? What is larger, min max or max mean? Uh, this, which is inside, more close to my function, is stronger. So if I have minimum next to my function, so the value will be smaller than when I have minimum further from it. So min max is larger, greater or equal than max min. Uh, any question, any comment about this? If not, we will continue. Okay. And uh, then we had this uh, nice uh, game interpretation. It said if you have two players, uh, Z player and Omega player, uh, I, you know, I, I realized did, did didactically it was not right to call them in this way. Maybe, I don't know, Zena and Omri, something like this. Uh, uh, so, uh, the omega player get, gets this m, m, amount f of z omega, and z player pays it. So, omega player uh, trying to maximize the outcome, and uh, z player to minimize. So, if omega player knows what Z player already choose. So if Omega player plays sec second, it just uh, maximize his outcome. And uh, if Z player plays fast, uh, his task is more, much more challenging. So he should anticipate all possible uh, decisions of Omega player and uh, minimize uh, his payment in the uh, worst case. So he, he knows that for every choice of Z, Omega player will choose this maximum. So Z player tries to minimize. And uh, like we told in this kind of games, I told in the lecture in, in general, but actually in this kind of games, who plays sec uh, second, he is in better position because he knows already everything. That's why uh, Omega player will gain more when he plays second, which is described here, comparing to other situation when uh, he plays first and Z player playing se second decide what is the best Z. Uh, <coughs> any question? about this any comment or if not just say yes uh, let me know that the communication is working is the communication working wow yes okay okay, okay. very good and uh, wow i have some sounds outside my door uh okay uh, then uh, we had the saddle point theorem which is very important it says that if you have a point which uh, like achieves minimum in z and maximum in omega then min max is equal to max min any any comments about this part Okay, then we continue. And then we go to a very important use of minimax concept. This is the duality, which we get via minimax of Lagrangian. And uh, most critical, so we, we take this uh, problem, uh, 
with inequality constraints and build Lagrangian and say that if we maximize it in lambda, then when uh, point is feasible, all constraints are uh, negative or zero, uh, maximum value of this term with non negative lambda is zero. So we get the objective function when x feasible. And if x is not feasible, uh, then if one constraint is positive, violated, so I can drive my corresponding lambda to infinity and get this infinity. And uh, so this is a, this is a, a ideal penalty, yes, and we minimizing it uh, in X, we get the uh, optimal objective value. But uh, if we choose the, change the order to get better, more smooth minimization, then by minimax theorem, we get that. Uh, so we have uh, we first when we after we change order of minimization, we first minimize in X Lagrangian in X and get this uh, so-called dual objective function and then we maximize it in, in lambda and get some value which is less or equal than uh, min max and this is the solution of dual problem which is lower bound for our primal solution any question any comment here okay then we continue. Uh, okay, so we had dual function with duality. Uh, actually, I'm not sure whether I want to go through lecture. You know what? So we we passed in, in enough. Even you know a little bit more than enough. And now with our class exercise, I, I would uh, get back a little bit to this uh, minimax concept and uh, give you some examples of uh, function with minimax. Uh, let me skip my slides. Uh, 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 you know, my variable, my variables uh, z and omega don't have to be continuous. They may be in indices, like indices in the matrix. So, uh, for example, z is the index in the row of uh, the matrix, and omega is the number of columns. So, z is one, two, three, and omega is one, two, three. And in the matrix, I put value of my function. So my, my function is function of Z and omega. It's easier for me to put it as a, as a matrix. And then I would ask, uh, I would ask, uh, what does it mean compute uh, uh, mean max and max mean of this function f of z uh, f uh, of z and omega and uh, I will put some drawing on my slide annotate maybe even thin line okay let's do the following thing so uh, what we want to uh, to do, we want to compare mean mean max, minimum in z, maximum in omega, with the other option, uh, maximum in uh, omega, uh, minimum in z of the same function f z omega. Uh, let's uh, consider the first option. So, uh, 
uh, who uh, assume that uh, omega player plays second, yes, in, in this first option. So he minima uh, he already knows that and uh, minimizes our function in omega. So omega is the uh, index in this vertical direction. And uh, we will build, we will solve this uh, numerical example now together. And then I will give you more, more, more example for training. Uh, so if, if I want to minimize for given Z, for example, Z is equal one. Uh, one means that I choose uh, the first column in this matrix. Uh, what would be, uh, which omega will uh, uh, provide me maximal yes maximal function value three uh, just second i i i will uh you you you're you right and but we will go step step by step let's let put a uh, maximal value of first column it's seven yes i i, I will put it yes in, in the additional row okay the second column what should I eight. put? Eight. Eight. Okay, thank you. And the third column is nine. Nine. Okay. And now I will even split this uh, square. And now I should uh, what I do in that minimize in 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 that. So and you you were right that minimal. Minimal will be seven, yes. Mm -hmm. Minimal yes. will be se seven, and I will even circle this. Uh, this number will solve this first problem, mean max. And uh, let's try in other direction. Let's try in other direction, max mean. So when we minimize in that, that player is plays. First or second in this row? Anybody can tell me? Z plays. It's a little bit confusing when you start. He plays second. He plays second because um, W is assuming that Z will take the minimal after um, he goes first. So he's trying to maximize whatever Z will take second. Yes. And uh, also, uh, the task of Z is very simple. It just minimizes under known omega. Yes. Okay. So if Z plays uh, second, for example, if, if uh, omega was uh, choose uh, choose first row, then uh, Z will uh, choose the minimum. Yes, of first row one. Okay. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So here in second row, we will put uh, what? What we will put here? Four. 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 Thank you very much. And here? Seven. Seven. And uh, Omega player will choose. Uh, the max over these the maximum of them so he will choose Which is... seven yes mm -hmm. yes he, he will take this additional co column and choose seven and we see a very nice thing that independently on order in this example mean max is equal to max mean uh, so uh, can anybody tell me what is uh, special about our matrix uh, that uh, mean max is really equal to max min? There is a saddle point. It's saddle point. So uh, I think I had nice summary in the next slide. Uh, okay, let 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 uh, let put it here. Um, so, 
uh, what is say, say, say the point if we minimizing if we minimizing in uh, in z yes then for other other values of z when from this point we change only z variable we should increase our objective function yes in this direction and uh, we see that it's really so yes eight and nine are higher and in omega when we fix z and move in omega the the direction we should decrease and it's really so uh, i i will i need to save my slide and clear and clean it in order to move uh, let me do clear all drawings because what i want to do i want to remind you settle point theorem yes so uh, what the, does it uh, says if if i have such a point z star and omega star then when i change z i only decrease my function yes oops sorry was i right or wrong in last claim i was wrong here i ch i change omega yes z is uh, equal to z star when i change omega i uh, decrease my function and uh, when i change z i increase my my, my function because uh, uh, the function with saddle point let me uh, annotate again the function with saddle point uh, it was in the lecture i am not sure whether i have this slide so in uh, it's like uh, uh, z square minus omega square yes example yes uh, so if if we uh, if we change z so it, it goes up and uh, if for example this our variable omega if we change omega it goes down it's a stereometric picture so uh, is it uh, really so here uh, if we change uh, z if we change z yes we increase when th this is our saddle point okay so if we change the that we only increase our function and if we change omega we de decrease okay i will save and clear and uh, let me move back let me move back to my to my example i think here i have the summary so uh, again if if i move in z the direction i increase so in z this is minimum and in omega this is maximum okay okay and uh, now we are close to to break uh, and before the break i i will give you one more example uh like i only want to hear whether communication is working are you with me it is working okay very yeah. good thank you so uh, we have one more example like here but you should train yourself yes uh, to find the min max and man, uh, max min of this second example i will leave you on uh, whiteboard and we will have a 10 minute break and maybe 
it's not much time and maybe seven more minutes in 17 minutes uh, we will meet back uh, any any questions before the break okay so if uh, no questions we just stop with this slide and you have your rest and work on this example and i pause my okay thank you okay then i will uh, just share my screen and we will do it together okay and then i have my solution if uh... ah <laughs> you <laughs> you okay you 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 know it's so simple okay, yeah let, it's simple let, yeah let, let put it uh, really I, I i i expect you just to tell me and i will write with you just a second I will put my pen with my writing always annotation annotate here okay so let's decide first of all uh what we do first we do for example minimum in z i i will write here minimum in z maximum in omega okay what uh, should we do for this in which order should we start so we should first uh look at uh, each row and choose the maximal omega at each column sorry at each column because mm -hmm. omega okay. omega omega is more close to our function uh, first of all who plays first omega z z z plays first Despite that omega is more close to our function, z plays first, omega plays second, and we first do mini maximization in omega. So in first column we put uh, what should we put? Five. Five. And then second eight. Column, eight. And then nine. Nine. Okay. And then we minimize in Z. Yes. Mm -hmm. in, from this uh, additional row, we choose minimal value. Yes. Mm -hmm. five, yeah. So it's five. And let's even uh, circle. We choose this number. Okay. And now we do where should I write? <laughs> Somewhere else. Okay. Ah, okay. I, I had even space here. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I should, I want to do maximal, maximum in omega, minimum in z of my function f, z omega. Okay. So what I do now, what do I do now? Now you look at the rows and choose the minimal value of each one of them. Okay. So what uh, I put here? And three. Three. And then two and then one. Two. One. And then what do I do with these three numbers? We choose the maximum between them. Three. Three. Okay. And let me put this number in the square. So I had two numbers. So and now max mean, which is larger, max mean or min max? Min max. Min max is larger. So it's five, yes? Mm -hmm. So I put larger or equal. 
here is uh, my mean max, yes, and here is my max mean. So it uh, works, yes, it, it works. Like, uh, so hi, how I uh, remember who is more close to my function is stronger. So if minimum is more close, that the minimum is stronger. So this is less or equal. But uh, so and the, it's okay, yes. Uh, so if, if in the first example it was a saddle point, so what is the saddle point? Uh, let us remind one more important no, uh, notion. If I have a saddle point Z star, if I would would have yes. Uh, sorry, should undo. Uh, omega star is a saddle. I should move even more my screen. Saddle. Then, uh, if I move in omega, uh, how it say? If I move in omega from this point, will I decrease or increase? If I fix Z and move in omega, it's minimum in Z. In Z. So uh, this saddle point, it's like minimum. Uh, uh, hmm. I don't want to go to the lecture slide, uh, but we should uh, remember uh, uh, Z star is like minimizer because we are mini minimizing in 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 Z. So uh, and omega is maximizer. So if I change omega, I should de decrease. Yes. F. And if I uh, change that, I I should uh, increase. Yes, F. Uh, let's uh, check again, again in our old example. In our old example, I have seven. So if I move uh, uh, in that. I increase, yes, like it's written here. And if I move in omega, I decrease. Uh, just a second, I, I should close my door. But uh, let's see what uh, ha happens in our second uh, eg eg example. If it would be a saddle point moving in uh, in direction omega, what should we decrease? Yes, are you with me? Please respond with voice. Anybody? Yes. Us? Yes, yes. So. If if I from five from this uh, point uh, circle five, I would change omega. I should decrease f. Yes, in omega it's uh, like maximizer, and if I move in z, I should increase. Do I increase when I move right? Ah, huh? I don't because I have. Uh, uh point six yes which is larger than five uh, okay so that's why i conclude that five is not saddle point and the same i can ch uh, check with three uh, moving along that i increase but moving uh, along omega 
I don't decrease. So both of them are not saddle points, and that's why max min is not equal to min max. And then I ask a question can we maybe change this matrix in the way our data, yes? In the way that, for example, five will become saddle point. Any suggestion? From, so from five, when I move uh, in direction Z, what should happen? I should uh, increase, yes? Yeah. I should increase. So what should I do? Maybe, and uh, when I moving to Omega, I de de decrease. In direction of Omega, it seems to be okay, yes? From five, I'm moving to other values of Omega other indices and it decreases but here in order to increase i may put here some larger number so i don't know for example seven let's try seven here instead of one will it uh, make our problem uh, settle problem How it will change our table if I will put seven here? Any suggestion? One becomes seven, and then you have five. So instead oh, of one, five. you put seven, yes. And instead of uh, no, five. No, no, five, five, minimum. Five, five, because uh, in uh, that we minimize, yes? In yeah. that we minimize. Thank you very much. How do I do undo, undo, undo? Okay. So here is five. And what is here? Here I put. Uh, maximal value in every column yes so here nothing will change in the bottom row am i right yeah okay so now uh, let's uh, see again uh, what is mean max so we maximize in omega uh getting this row and then we me uh, looking for minimal value in uh, in that so it's five yes am i right yes okay and what is here from this column we from columns we all, all always look for maximal value so instead of three, three to five, you will get five. So we really see that we, oops, it's not good five. Let me write it again. Uh, I should write five here, yes. So now, now this uh, really really solution of the problem of both minimum max min and min max and the uh, uh, saddle point theorem is working okay i think i even summarized the second example somewhere on some slide let me save uh, any any question any comment about this this stuff is rather new for you and uh, i think it takes a little bit uh, brain effort to get used to it 
Okay. If no question, I will clear all drawings and even clear here and see. I think I have this uh, example. I have this uh, example that you saw. Yes. And uh, okay. Yes, and the repaired uh, example here. Okay. So now we are back. Now we are back to our lecture and uh, back to Lagrangian. So we use the uh, saddle point theorem uh, to develop Lagrangian duality. And uh, like we told, uh, okay. Uh, uh, if I maximize uh, Lagrangian in multipliers, I get ideal penalty. And if I minimize afterwards in X, I really get optimal value of my problem. But if I go in other direction, it may be advantages in uh, many senses. But I am not sure. I know that uh, uh, max uh, mean uh, is uh, smaller or equal than mean max. So the dual problem will give me. Uh, estimate from below of uh, my solution and this is uh, called weak duality theorem that uh, uh, mean max which is my optimal value is greater the equal that maximal of dual function which is mean of Lagrangian any any question any comment here because now, now we will move uh, move soon uh, move uh, faster and come to another class example uh, here is the weak duality theorem once more and uh, but we told also in the lecture then when uh, Carlos Kuntaker conditions are satisfied for co convex optimization case then uh, strong duality holds I mean minimum min max is uh, equal to max min and we can get a primal solution solving dual problem and this uh, what we will do now with uh, our next class example we also mentioned uh, just a second uh, one more condition which is called Slater condition, which is uh, much easier to check than uh, Karus Kuntaker because Karus Kuntaker requires linear independence of gradients. And when you didn't solve the problem yet, you, you are not sure what the gradients are linearly independent. And even uh, so, they may be linearly dependent, still strong duality may hold. So Slater condition says if there is a point, feasible point where all nonlinear constraints are strictly satisfied, this is enough to have a strong duality. And pay attention that this is uh, those are nonlinear convex constraints. Uh, linear co uh, convex constraints, li linear constraints may be satisfied with equality and still a strong duality will take place. Can you start a question about that? Yes. Do we talk about convexity of the function here or that it defines uh, convex set? We talk about convexity of, of GI, right? Ye yes. Uh, those, uh, Everything uh, what we write are only functions. You are completely right in formulation of the problem of optimization problem. We may restrict X also belong to some uh, uh, convex set with non -empty, empty relative interior. We don't say all the special words because actually in our course, we're not learning seriously convex optimization 
it's uh, mathematically more serious course and I would strongly recommend it for those who are interested to get deeper to optimization to go to the course which is learned according to Stephen Boyd you know there is a book and uh, uh, video lectures and uh, in electrical engineering I think even the course is taught in in this way and uh, even more serious and more deep course is course of uh, Arkady Nemirovsky. He was uh, my PhD ad ad advisor. And here, there you have very serious mathematics and uh, a lot of examples of uh, practical problems, which doesn't seem convex maybe from the first side, but uh, act, act, act convex. So this is whole theory. We only touch all these issues a, a little bit. Our course is very basic and uh, relatively simple. Okay. And now let me continue. And uh, so let, 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 let again, let me stay with uh, Lagrangian. So we we have dual function, which is minimal, minimum of Lagrangian with respect to X, and uh, have uh, dual problem uh, to maximize this minimum. And let's try to solve a class example. Uh, let me see whether <laughs> I have it in a relatively small. I, I hope that you see something. Uh, assume that uh, we have a system of equations with wide uh, matrix. It may be under determinant system of, of equation. Pictographically, I showed it here. Uh, do you see my slide? Can you see it? Yes, we did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, if you, if you have less equations than unknown, that your system is underdetermined, you have an infinite number of solutions. Typically, typically, still need some requirement on uh, matrix A. So uh, that's why uh, quite often people say, I will look for a solution with minimal norm, minimal two norm, minimal Euclidean norm. And this is a very useful and very widely used uh, approach how to solve undetermined system. And uh, uh, what I would propose you, and, and we want to develop formula. Somebody maybe knows this formula, it's a known formula of <coughs> show the inverse. But we like uh, don't know about it, and we want to get it. How do we get? We will solve dual problem. So we uh, we will go step by step. It's uh, first time, so I will help you. Uh, we uh, we write down Lagrangian, and uh, uh, we say that. Uh, to get dual function to get dual function I, I will switch for one second to my lecture to get dual function we need to uh, he, he is lambda and we use uh, y in our exercise so we need to minimize Lagrangian in x analytically we can do it analytically and uh, get uh, uh, dual function at of lambda and then we will maximize it so let's uh, swap back to our example so uh, so it's y instead of lambda uh, that's what I suggest you to do now uh, to write down what is the dual function mean uh, uh, we write down Lagrangian. How do we find minimizer of Lagrangian? This is a convex function in X, by the way, because uh, first term is convex quadratic function, and the second term is even linear in, in X. 
uh, we should just uh, write down gradient and equate it to zero and uh, say what is x bar and our dual function is just Lagrangian of this minimized. Uh, please start working. We don't have uh, enough time. Uh, just start working and see how much we will get till end of the lesson. And I strongly encourage those who are willing to stay a little bit more to stay with us and we will uh, uh, give recording, show recording to all other students. So let's solve this uh, first problem to write down explicitly gradient equated to, to zero and write down what is uh, our dual function. Okay. By the way, Michael. Yes. The minus before the y transpose is, is not necessarily minus, it can be plus, right? Um, you know, because uh, uh, my constraints are equality constraints. It doesn't matter. You, I, I can say a x minus b equal to zero. Yes, or minus a x minus b equal to zero. You can think that I did it with, with minus. It looks like when I put minus, uh, there will be less minuses in the solution. So both uh, options are legal. And by the way, pay attention that because uh, we have equality constraints, we don't have re restriction on y to be greater or equal zero. Only for inequality constraints, the Lagrange multiplied should be non-negative. Okay. You can start working. Uh, you know, like I told, okay, okay start working and we, we will have one more conversation in 10 minutes and uh, we'll see how many people are willing to stay till the end of this example. So, or even, or just raise your, your hand when you are ready. Just I want to put it on a record. Uh, Yair mentions that the uh, dual function uh, is concave, and this of, of course right. And dual function is uh, concave, even if uh, the original problem is not con is not convex. This is very important fact and very widely used. Again. Sorry, uh, would you like to share? Just yeah. Hello? In Val? Are you? Uh, could you please, uh, for, for the record, uh, repeat yeah, sure. the beginning here? Yes. Sorry. Uh, so, this is the Lagrangian. And we already saw in our course the uh, uh, gradient for the quadratic form and the linear, linear form. Mm -hmm. uh, so the gradient uh, for the sum of them is just the sum of the gradients of each one of them. So uh, this is what we can see here. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, after a uh, Taking this to the other side of the equation, we get x equals to equals to a transpose y. X bar. And, yes. Yes. Uh, and when we uh, put this yes. and in the Lagrangian, we get uh, the dual function, uh, which can be seen here. Yes. And um, 
and this term and this term are the same. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the final uh, form, uh, we can see it right here. It's minus uh, half, y transpose a, a transpose y plus y transpose b. Okay. Uh, who, who it was in Bali, yes? Yeah. Okay, in Bali, uh, thank you very much. And now uh, we, we can stop share. You, you can stop your share. And now those, again, we, we, the, the time is over, but those who want to finish this exercise would be very nice. Uh, let me get back to my, uh, um, oops, no, it's wrong, wrong screen. Sorry. And there is stop, stop share on new share. Uh, just a second. I think this this one. No, it's PowerPoint. I lost my window. Just uh, sorry. Technical interrupt. Technical interruption. Ah, here is. My window, I will share again. Here it is. Okay. okay, let's see what do I have in my slides. Hopefully, I have summary what, uh, of what we, yes, uh, here what we did on, on, until now. And the next step is uh, maximize. Uh, maximize this expression. We want to maximize the dual function. And let us do this, this step. Uh, so just uh, write down gradient of this uh, dual function and equate it to, to zero. Pay attention that the uh, dual uh, function is maximizing at of y uh, without constraints because uh, Originally, we had the equality constraint. That's why we have no restriction on sine of y. Okay, and whenever you're ready. I have a little question about this. Yes. Um, why is the, uh, what you call in the lecture, um, the, the uh, Lagrange, uh, uh, I forgot the name. <laughs> Adventure multipliers? Or... Yeah, the multipliers, yeah. Yes. And you say uh, that they are um, bigger or equal to zero. So isn't this a kind of constraint? Uh, once again, uh, when we low on the Karus Kuntaker condition, uh, we learned it for inequality constraint and for equality constraint. Do we have it anywhere here? Uh, okay. Here, what we learned for uh, inequality constraints that Lagrange multipliers should be greater or equal zero. And it was motivated also by this picture. If you remember, <laughs> and also that Lagrange multipliers are derivatives of my penalty function. We showed also the also this when we are close more and more close to solution when penalty be, be, becomes stronger. And then we consider it equality constraint. Let me find where it was. Some distance from here. Let, let me. Here, yes. If I have a problem with equality constraints, it's very important. And by the way, such uh, questions are in the exams from time to time. And thank you very much for this question. <coughs> then uh, uh, the penalty function is like a parabola, quadratic parabola. So it's uh, double sided, and you see it has part with negative and positive uh, derivative. 
so it says that uh, Lagrange multiplier, which is approximated by the derivative, maybe of any 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 sign, and uh, even oh, it's not here, but I also had a slide for with uh, Karush contactor conditions. Sorry, it's not here. It's uh, on you to find the appropriate slide. Uh, <coughs> okay. So and now we uh, we are back to our example, and uh, so we need to maximize. I, I hope that there are people who already solved this. This gradient is rather simple, gradient with respect to y, and we just equate it to zero uh, participants. Uh, uh, I don't see many hands. Okay, let, let me see whether I have this solution in my records. Maybe I'm not sure. Ah, actually, I did. I didn't. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's do it together in this way. In this case, who is still staying with me? Uh, Annotate. So, uh, what is the? Uh, you can write it here. Gradient of uh, eta. Yes. Uh, what it will be? Can you tell me? Who is still stay staying with me? Please uh, respond with voice. I'm here. Uh, who? who? Me, me, Adi. Ah, uh, Adi. 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 Okay, Adi. Let, let's uh, two of us or anybody who will want to jo join. Uh, so this is a quadratic function with matrix A. Which is symmetric. A, a which is symmetric. Yes, yes. It's even so it's symmetric. So all we get is uh, A A transpose Y. Uh, yes. Uh, with, minus with, first, with yeah. minus, yes. Yes. Minus a, a transpose y. Uh, and then we get uh, plus b. Plus b. And this is zero. Now you understand why did I put my minus in the beginning? Because all my expressions become very convenient. I put uh, on one hand side, uh, on one side the uh, unknown. Yeah. So I I get the I, I can write is... it a, a a transpose y equal b and assume we we assume now that a a transpose is invertible in general one can talk about this but let's for simplicity so then uh, y is equal um a a transpose uh inverse times yes. b a transpose inverse uh, times b okay how can we get x how can we get x just plug that back in yes 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 to to this formula uh so X uh, is uh, you may say it with bar, but actually, when you get to solution by a dual problem, it's actually X should be minimizer of Lagrangian. Any any case, <coughs> so it's uh, a transpose Y or a transpose. Uh, uh, a a transpose minus one b and this is very famous formula this is uh, this is called the pseudo inverse uh, yes pseudo inverse Uh, there are different right, left, 
complexity of the universe. Th this is right, not, not from the right, but meaning right type of pseudo universe, which uh, solves our problem. Okay. Any any question? Any co any comment? We, we we may ask questions about our lesson now, and then if anybody has other questions, as you know, we have a reception hours immediately after the lesson. So any any question? First of all, uh, regarding our class, our meeting now. Okay. If no question, then I will say. And clear all drawings. Is it clear? Okay. It will be on record. And uh, stop an annotating. Uh, and maybe even uh, 